the raw eggs at all? Yeah, I have okay. in the past. Yeah, we'll try some smoothies. Yeah, I'm not afraid of it. I, I'm, yeah. My immune system's pretty good. Um, Bruce says we should be taping this as episode number two of no the kidding. Anthony Anderson, right? No kidding. No, no kidding. We'll, we'll cover these topics again. I mean, those yeah. are all very important things. Yeah. Uh, Dominic says, I've heard that frozen food is not healthy. Any thoughts about that? I, I think it's kind of BS. I really do. I mean, they can freeze sperm and sperm is come, comes back to life and you know you can make a baby from it. So I just think the freezing thing, okay, sure. Yeah, that's why I was saying that, which Ellie says, some bacteria are freeze resistant. You gotta be careful. Yeah, okay. Uh, but you know, I mean, when you freeze stuff, it's gonna break the cell wall. You know, the water inside the cell is gonna bust that cell wall open. That's right. So that might even be good so you can get the nutrients. Otherwise, you know, you might not get them. But um, I don't think that there's that much degradation with the food, I really don't. And maybe even more because sometimes when they pick that stuff, like blueberries, raspberries, they freeze them right away because right. they know that it's going to be a frozen product instead of it sitting on the shelf at Whole Foods for a week or something, you know? So there's a different, I think it might even be better sometimes. And what, I, I see sometimes in labels it says flash freezing. What is that? I think it's just it's a like very a, like low temperature. Oh. Like 200 like they below. They just go right into some like yeah. major frozen area yeah. or something. Yeah. And you know, what's, what's funny about that is people will dog the frozen stuff, but then they're eating powders, you know, like, uh, you know, goji berry powder or maca powder. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how I, mean, I feel like that's really degraded because it's been powdered up so much and mm -hmm. then it just sits there and it could go rancid or whatever. Mm -hmm. How about the algaes though? Cause that's how I eat my algaes. And now I'm getting them in, almost have to. in capsule forms, which actually I love those, yeah. that now. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of chlorella, I do a lot of spirulina, but I don't expect it to be, I mean, I think that's kind of different because it is an algae, but I don't think it would be better than us going to directly to the pond and, you know, eating a Slurpee out of it. You know, I think that would be really cool, but mm -hmm. it's the best option available commercially. Mm -hmm. Unless someone starts selling algae juice in a can, you know, or a bottle, mm -hmm. it's like, right. I think it's the best thing, but I don't, I'm not too worried about frozen food. Yeah, I, it's amazing to me how... People just spend a lot of money on this healthy stuff. I mean, right on the, around the corner here, you go. there's like a whole grocery aisle of just any kind of drink you want from kombucha to, mm -hmm. you know, organic, anything. But uh, what's amazing to me is like $5 for this. Yeah. I mean, you read the ingredients and yeah, there's not that much sugar in it. It's one of the last ingredients. Uh -huh. So you are getting something there. But, you know, you I'm always like, I can make this at home and make 20 of them for that price. Do it yourself, or, yeah. <laughs> you can make a gallon of kombucha for 25 cents probably. You know, know you need about a cup of sugar and then you need your about five or six bags of green tea or black tea and then that's it. And just pour a little starter in or pour, put a little scoby in there and then in two weeks you've got a gallon of kombucha. It's just the convenience of it, I think. And, yeah. And they have it dialed down where they know how to make it really nice and fizzy and all that. but. It's so expensive. Which will make you buy more and well, buy yeah. it again. It's Kenneth like, says, get New Zealand oysters. Saves all the problems you're worrying about. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a company, I think, called Moxor. And oh, they yeah, have, yeah. Yeah, they do like the... Uh, I think the Natural News guy, yes, he yes. promotes it. But it's, isn't that a network marketing thing? It might be. I think it is, actually. Yeah, yeah it might be. But it seemed like a great product. Yeah, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, and this one lady that uh, was on Patrick's show for feeding dogs and cats, like health, uh, like healthy pet food, mm -hmm. she was really into that stuff. Mm -hmm. She, I mean, she's a part of it, though. You know, she's a, one of the members, obviously, of the MLM, but, but yeah. Yeah, that was the only thing that I was turned off by, just because we're all turned off by a lot of that stuff. I know. I recently joined one called Amazon Herbs, mm -hmm. and the, the main reason, well, there's two reasons. I really trust the guy that referred me, um, along with uh, uh, his friend Mia, and then also they use the profits. The whole business model is around supporting the indigenous farmers down in the Amazon to pull products from the food forests, like cacao, other herbs, and that gives it, everyone a financial incentive to keep that intact instead of plowing it over. Mm. And you know they put money back into it, so I felt like that was a good one. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's an MLM, and that I wasn't so crazy about that at first. And but they only do certain herbs, or do they have a whole. They're really into like the camu camu yes. berries, uh, maca. So a lot of the South pot, American. It's all South American, yeah. yeah. Patiarco, chuchu, hawasi, a lot of that cacao. 
So a lot of, yeah, a lot of Amazonian herbs and mm -hmm. I just really like the business model. So I'm going to start with them really soon and we'll see where that goes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know you turned me on a long time ago to, uh, uh Rose. Mountain Rose. It? Mountain Rose. Yes. Mountain Rose herbs. Which I still, I Gosh, love they them. Be They're the best price. Yeah, I want to get them as a sponsor, actually, and this would be the, yeah. the good show to get them for. Um, I just, Dr. Frugal approved, I mean. D big time. That's like the best out there, I think. Once you find Mountain Rose, it's hard to go anywhere else. Yeah. Because I mean, anywhere else is probably shopping at Mountain Rose and then just repackaging it. That's right. I mean, I buy my bee pollen, chlorella, uh, everything, all the goji berries, any kind of superfood, any kind of salt, herb. A gallon of coconut oil for thirty-seven dollars. A yeah, whole gallon of organic awesome. coconut oil. Yeah. I mean, people are buying jars for twenty. Mm -hmm. So, Doctor Frugal, Mount yeah, Rose. The only thing I wish they sold was the blue green algae, but no, they never got it. Hopefully, they, they'll get into that. I someday. think it's only a matter of time. I mean, they're an Oregon company, and yeah. that stuff comes from Klamath Lake yeah, in yeah. Oregon. So, it's got to be just a matter of time before they start sourcing that. They have chaga there, chaga tea. Oh I yeah, mean, I know. It's like awesome. twenty percent of what other people are charging. They're yeah. chaga chunks. Crazy. Yeah. And the other thing that uh, it's fairly new, which I think it worked great for me when I was feeling a little down, was uh, and um, where I get the pine pollen. The f what's the name of it? Raw Forest Foods. Raw Forest Foods with one R or something like that. Raw Forest Foods. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. one R as opposed to two R's or something. For it's forest. A difference. Yeah, for forest. Yeah. Anyway, they are selling this shilajit. Yes. Which is, you know what that is? It's uh, it's from the Himalayas, like, right. I don't know. Indiana. Well, it's a uh, compacted organic material from thousands of years ago. Oh. When it gets hot in the Himalayas, it seeps out of the bottom of the mountains. Whoa. Kind of like, uh, you know, something that's been sitting there for so long and then it gets baked and then yeah. it starts to come out. Yeah. Well, that's what that is. And what it, the idea is that it contains every single mineral you know, on earth, yeah. or at least most of them that we the need. The ones that are there, yeah. And, uh, and it's not that great tasting. Oh, no, it's bitter. Yeah, it's just kind of like a remedy. So it's a real remedy. And, uh, but no, I, I took it once and I just, I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Like I was feeling like immune, like, you know, I was ready to pull out the colostrum. Mm -hmm. And I said, let me take some of this instead. And, mm -hmm. and it was like, Worked like a charm. The yeah. next day I woke up, no problems. Yeah. And I think that a lot of these things that we encounter, our immune system is always encountering things no matter what. Sure. It's just a matter of the balance of the different nutrients and minerals yeah. in your body at that moment in time. Yeah. And I think that Shilajit is great at restoring that balance, mainly of minerals, I'm thinking, yeah. um, which I think is a great, it's called Shilajit. Yeah, S-H-I-L-A-J-I-T. That's right. And have you ever I, tried that? I have. I have. I got a pack from uh, uh, Ultimate Superfoods a while back. And when I was in uh, California last week, I was at Erewhon and the Tonic Bar. They're all about combining shilajit with raw milk. Really? Those two things, they say, are supposed to be amazing. Yeah. So they would always blend them together or you know, make a smoothie out of it with something, maybe something else in there. But they said the milk and the shilajit. Hmm. Something about it. Wow. Keep that in mind. I don't know. It's like a brown milk. Brown milk, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little, a couple stevia drops. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else are they saying here? I'm not kidding. Can you, can't, you don't want it alive if it's a wild pig. I don't know. Kenneth was saying I, I missed the first part of that. It's a wild pig. If a wild pig could, it would eat you and everyone you ever loved. Yeah. I well, know, they're scary. <laughs> we had javelinas in, in Phoenix and they would just rip up the garden and oh, then. Yeah. And one time, uh, some relatives were walking their dogs, like their golden retrievers, and the, the dogs ran up to the javelinas, a hundred stitches in the dogs. The javelinas just tear them up. Oh, those man. Those wild pigs. You could kill them easily. Yeah. So they'll totally kill a person. Well, they've got all those teeth, Yeah, the right? tusks, and yeah. they're so ferocious, and they stink, and it's not, um, they're not cute, cuddly, little fuzzy piggies, that's no. for sure. Ellie says, Anthony, you need to be careful. Some parasites resist long-term freezing. Yeah. Dominic mm -hmm. says, probably. Jolene says, why are we talking about pigs? Yeah, Kenneth right. says, we hunt wild pigs with a hunting knife here. Oh, wow. Where's here, Kenneth? Um, Ellie says, says, eat raw meat like a real man. Yeah. Hey, yeah, Jolene. Hey, what, what? Tryptophan is good for depression. It is. Uh-huh. 
and you know the real sources of tryptophan are in animal products. Yes. Like there's some, you know, there's some, but you, if you're looking for the real therapeutic benefits, you really got to go to the animal products. Well, that's the one thing you can't get from the anim uh, from you know, the plant kingdom. Right? They say, you know, they say pumpkin seeds and durian is known for that, but I think the real, the good stuff is really in the other in the other stuff, the animals. As far as the um, the freezing, the two week thing, I've heard that from the Weston A. Price Foundation. They kind of give a two week thing for going for raw meat. Mm -hmm. So who knows, who knows? I'm just passing that along. Not in my experience, I've never even frozen it. I would just go to Whole Foods and yeah. buy raw lamb mm -hmm. and just chunk it up with garlic and, and egg yolks and spices and onions and then just eat it, you know? Right. Or ground bison. So it's kind of like curing it in a way. Kind of, but I mean, mm -hmm. it was super fresh. Mm -hmm. But I think a, a really important thing would be to maybe have a little yogurt before or a little kombucha before. Make sure you've got the good probiotics. Right. So if there is some kind of bacteria thing going on, uh, there's really no room at the table for that bacteria to sit down. To with. grab hold, right? Yeah. Frozen fruits are better. Ellie, better to eat fresh while it's still warm. Well, sure, of <laughs> course, of course. Ellie, I, mean, I like buying frozen berries because they are picked ripe, but other stuff That's gets ripe during transport away from the sun. True. That's the key, yeah. Flash freezing avoids damage to the cell membrane. Oh, so the flash freezing doesn't bust the outer I didn't know that. cell layer. I think that I've read that as well. Okay. Um... Sugar is the narcotic of our times. Oh my God, are you kidding me? That's yeah. one of my biggest the, the, vices. Uh, the, aristoc uh, the aristocrats like in France and England back in the 1700s and 1600s, they would eat sugar to get high. Yeah, so, uh, Ellie eat. says it's the opium of the masses. It really is. It really is, yeah. And I actually I was at my grandparents' house for Father's Day a little while back, and they had um, red velvet cake and junky ice cream, like corn syrup ice cream. And, you know, I, don't, I, I had a very little amount just to be nice, and I could feel my head feeling kind of fuzzy, kind of weird, almost I like, can't I, do that like red I drank. Velvet. Oh, it's disgusting. Everything comes out red. Yeah. Food it's coloring. like, what the hell is in that red? Well, it's like... It's all food coloring? It's food coloring. And I, I thought I was her, like rhubarb or something. Oh, God, I wish. I asked her, and she's like, no, I put a whole, I put a whole thing of red food coloring in this cake. And that shit is, ooh, that stuff is just toxic. I know, it does not agree with me. Yeah, red velvet cake's a joke. I mean, yeah, unless, when you unless eat like this, you're it. very sensitive to those things, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. It, uh, and yeah, the other opium is, it's the, uh, well, sugar is the narcotic of our times. It's the opium of the masses. And Kenneth kind of says, caffeine is the narcotic of offices. <laughs> yeah. God knows around here, yeah, we've been yeah. drinking a lot of caffeine lately. It's tricky with coffee because it'll stress the adrenals. So later on in the day, a person might feel a little more fatigued. And then that'll yes. lead to more coffee use. Yes. Even just like a little, like some apple or some green juice is kind of a nice buffer. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not against coffee, but just kind of realize that there are some adrenal issues and try and, you know, support your adrenals as you enjoy your coffee as well. Yeah. And go with organic and make sure that you're supporting fair trade. Absolutely. That's really key. And I've been, because I've been drinking more caffeine lately, it's because I've been, you know, burning the candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been switching, trying to switch off of it to like green tea and yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't drink tea with sugar, which is helps because ca I can't do the caffeine without sugar. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then, well, I love the heavy cream on my coffee. That's yeah, like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm addicted to that heavy cream from the from the farm. I know. I wish I would have put that order in for that stuff. Well, they haven't had any for the last two weeks. I'm oh. like. Uh, Having I, withdrawals. <laughs> I honestly don't know how they make it so thick. Because even know. when I buy a gallon like, of whole milk, like, un, you know, and you'll get this top layer, but, you know, it's pretty liquidy. Yeah. It's not like it's, yeah. their stuff is like goop. Yeah, it's like, you really have to dig the spoon in there and yeah. chunk it out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a really good value. It mm -hmm. is. I mean, I know it's more expensive than whatever else, but it's so dense. Oh, man. And I remember, like, I ate one of those things in, like, a week. I would just kind of I know. Keep... You eat it right from the spoon. Yeah. It's oh, so my good. God. You're hardcore. It's so good. Ellie says, I bought cat, cat organic cat food, and, and her cat hissed at her. <laughs> no. Different food. Yeah, right? Cats don't like change. You should try to... Con uh, Dominic says, you should try to convince him. Kenneth can't get more organic than a bird. Yeah. Ellie says, it was pissed off and wouldn't touch it. Mm -hmm. Friend of Rex, Mia and Jason Rotman? Uh, no, Mia Andres of Organic Avenue. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I met her. She's, oh, yeah, yeah. She's a sweetheart. 
Kenneth says, I'm not surprised the cat was pissed off. What was it made out of? <laughs> yeah. And Bruce says, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I think one of the best things for animals is really getting into the raw meat. And you can flavor it with some stuff that they might like. But really, like, look, it's just like humans. You know, if you were to put an animal in a zoo, you would want to find the most appropriate food that it was eating before that time. And if we think of this, I get this from Daniel Vitalis, but he says, think of civilization as a zoo. You know, and we're all in this zoo, and we need to look at the past and see what our ancestors were eating. And then it kind of ties into the primal diet and right, all that stuff. Which is the name of a book, and yeah. it's a great book. I mm -hmm. forget the, the guy that wrote that, but... Yeah, I don't know. There's another good one called Primal Body, Primal Mind. Oh, that's the one that I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, Nora That's Gagatis. the one you, you recommended, right? Yeah, yeah, she's really good. I mean, yeah, that's an awesome book. Yeah. And Bruce wants me to talk about cat butts coffee. You know anything about that? No. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> you can awesome. google it guys yeah uh you ever see mystic kitty or mystic cat on youtube that's like a talking cat that they you know i'll show you on youtube no I you ever see the honey badger the no. honey badger on youtube well we'll watch it after this the cat food was <laughs> liver and grains ellie says uh bruce weiner at dawn probably no joke alice it's probably the liver she legit yeah that's not how you spell it ellie but close S-H-I-L-A-J-I-T. Right. It's uh, uh, Ayur Ayurvedic. Um, I would think it's so. It's been used in like Indian cultures for thousands okay. of years or something. Um, nice vegan feed. Maybe have a couple of bread rolls so you don't get carb hunger. Uh, in New Zealand, the, the wild pig hunting is very dangerous. I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you that don't know, New Zealand, New Zealand has very strict standards on farming, right? Yes, yes. It's one of the best in the world. Really? Uh, when it comes to organic and... And it's uh, super clean, clean down there, you know? Right. They're eating grass, clean water, clean air. And that's really important. Yeah. Um, Ellie says there should be an Anthony Anderson burrito at Mezzi Grill, all natural and healthy. <laughs> cool. It's a joke because I think one of the news outlets said that they sell burritos at Mezzi Grill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it's a big joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, red burrito. Kenneth says red food model. coloring is actually an agricultural pesticide. Oh. Yeah. Like Red Lake. Red I Lake think it's 40. a petroleum product. It, mu it must I, be. From what I understand. It's still nasty. I don't even know how that's legal to even sell. Yeah. Green tea is good. I also like red bush. Yeah, red bush. Rooibos. They, and re, yeah. It might be red bush. Ro, rooibos. And Anthony, thoughts on I, coffee I, or espresso? I'm a fan. I don't drink it all that much, but I'm definitely a fan of it. And I like to enjoy it more in moderation here and there. I feel like when I have, it's like a drug, you know, for me where if I have it all the time, I really don't feel it as much. But I like a little bit with maybe a... Uh, a little cannabis or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. If, uh, if you're in a state where that's legal. Right, exactly. Or country. It's kind of a nice balance, mm -hmm. the coffee. Kenneth says, I only turned up at the end, but this has gotten into, onto topics that interest me. Cool. Best part cool. of the show are the audience interaction, Bruce, is why you need a call-in show. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be cool too. Yeah, we plan on having that ability. We just... You know, all these things that we're implementing are things that we've thought of before. It's sure. just that they're rolling out as we uh, progress in the network. Um, at least weekly, maybe daily. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, right. Uh, Bruce says, Ed and I should do a show like this is right now where Ed reads the chat room out loud and we both discuss what you all say. That's cool. And Bruce says, we are thinking of a daily really cool. show called The Bruce and Ed Live from New York. That's cool. Um what what says resurrecting bread yeah exactly mm -hmm. oh for anybody that's a fan of bread look for the ezekiel bread because that's sprouted and that's the real big key where you, if you're eating bread from grains that aren't sprouted it still has the phytic acid and other anti-nutrients in that bread in that grain so when you sprout it when you soak it in water it that all that stuff degrades and you have like a really actually a healthy product so i really if i eat bread now i just usually either go for sourdough bread or the ezekiel bread Ezekiel? Yep. And at one point you were recommending, what was that one that we used to buy that was frozen or something? I mean, oh, they sell the it mana fresh. bread. Mana bread, right? Mana bread. No, there was another oh. one. I can't remember now. Huh. I remember... Um, that was frozen. Yeah, when we were over on 42nd Street, you would make those eggs in a, eggs in a hole or something. Eggs in a nest? Yeah, something. <laughs> I forget. Anyway, it I forget the name now. It might have been... 
Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I forget. Whatever it it's was, like I should have been using Ezekiel. Gro, gro, uh, groit, gro, uh, oh, it's like that sunflower bread. Yeah, like, it's, it's like... that German thick stuff. Yes. Like a big rectangle. Yes. That's good, too. Yeah, I think that's pretty I forget good. the name of it anyway. Yeah. Uh, Bruce says, what is cannabis? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, kind of your daily bread. Yeah, they're joking because, you know, bread is B-R-E-D. Oh, Bruce and yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but they're doing uh, double puns there. <laughs> uh, how does Anthony makes bread into Ezekiel bread? <laughs> well, I would just buy it, actually. I mean, you can make it yourself and sprout it and bake it if you're down for that, but... I feel like they've really got it dialed down, and it's it's a it's four dollars for a loaf, and a whole loaf might last me two weeks probably. And this is a grain, right? Is that good? Yeah, they have different. I mean, they've got different blends. You know, so they maybe have like eight varieties. And the reason it's it's better is because it's it's not highly commercialized, so you can get uh, a product that's virtually organic. Yeah, it, it is organic, but it's not farmed organically, is it? Or no, no, both? no. Yeah, because it would have to be farmed organic. Uh -huh. But the real difference with them is that it's sprouted. Mm -hmm. So um, the grains have been awakened, the phytic acid is gone, and that's, you know, like the, the big part of the game. And otherwise, mm -hmm. you're never going to find that anywhere else. They're not soaking their grains and sprouting them, then grinding them down. They just grind them down. Right. So even if you're at home and you want to make uh, pinto beans or you want to make rice or whatever, let it soak in water overnight and then make it. Because that's going to expand. It's going to pull out that junk, drain it out, and then make it lentils you know right anything like that quinoa oh my god Let i'm getting soak. really hungry. i know it's like six o'clock <laughs> i don't even think i've eaten today you haven't eaten it's no to eat. i don't think i ate kenneth says sorry i have to go i have to get a couple hours of yoga in before i head out well thank Peace. you kenneth for yeah, joining thanks, us ken. and i hope is it that ken ken Ressinger? kenneth crawford oh ken crawford right on man yeah okay Shout for enjoy now, yoga ken. buddy yeah enjoy the yoga that's Oh, to get key. back into that, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> I know, I haven't done my yoga in a while either. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry too. We should get something to eat. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, he's got the Vibrams going yeah. here. Change your life, everybody. Get some of these. They look goofy as heck, but, you know. <laughs> Once you start wearing them, you're not going to want to wear regular shoes again. Or you'll have to buy wider shoes because your feet are going to naturally spread, up, spread apart. Spread more. Oh. Oh, same if you wear flip-flops too. Yeah, that's, we didn't talk about it, but uh, one of the other things that Anthony's really into is ground, what is it? Ground? Oh, the grounding technology. Cr grounding yeah. technology. So being connected to the, the, the electrical current of the earth. And whether that's walking barefoot or having um, a grounding pad that's connected into the outlet or, you know, there's a lot of other things you can do. The best is really to be in the ocean or a lake with the water. Mm -hmm. And then it's just full of free electrons that are going to just pull out the negative stuff out of your body. And how do you do that, like in New York? Well, you would plug it, you would have a grounding pad and just plug it into the wall. And then when you're at your computer, you have your feet on it. They've got a mouse I gotta pad. i got to get one of those. Yeah, because especially being around this stuff. So many... Computers, right? yeah, because we can and phones, we can get an EMF meter, yeah, we can get an EMF meter and just hold it next to stuff, and the numbers jump up when you get close to something, or or if you like turn on the microwave, it bam, goes up real high, or even next to the light bulb in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. like really high up there. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of protecting yourself from that. It's almost like putting a helmet on before right. going for a bike ride or something. Yeah, and I one of the recommendations too is also to never use your cell phone when it's plugged to the wall. Yep, and even the computer too, or an iPad. You know, like when it, 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 the, well, the tower, the keyboard protects you, but like a laptop, maybe not so much. I wouldn't think so. I mean, they've done the test. David Wolf had that one iPad versus Kindle video. Oh, really? And they have the meters; they can test it all. And as soon as he touches the thing, it drops down. And then he tested it where the iPad was plugged in, and it was giving 24 volts of electricity, like to his body. 24 volts, so crazy. That's Un why you get drained, like, yeah. just by being plugged in and on. And know. all spaced out. And think, like, little kids are sitting in their bed with a, with a plugged-in iPad on their stomach, you know, or, or right next to their head as they're reading it. Or, so the key, really, is to have that connection. Or he unplugged it, and it was putting out 6 volts just by unplugging it. So that was a big difference, and then you can get it down lower with grounding. I mean, if you were to sit on a rock outside, it would be zero, you know, because it's right. just automatically pulling it off of you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's it's cool. Good, I'd love to video. learn more about that, actually. Yeah, yeah, especially with all this stuff around. It's good to kind of have Yeah, that and now more and more people are talking about it and doing these kind of experiments, mm -hmm. you know, real-life experiments. That's yeah. cool. All right, well, 
I think I'm gonna head dinner out. Time, dinner time, yeah. Yeah. Thanks Thank everybody. Thank you guys, and thanks for all the great questions. Yeah, really awesome. We look forward to a lot more, and um, and I'm gonna look into this Eric Braverman. Mm-hmm. Um, and thanks for the suggestions. Peace, everybody. Peace. Later. Bye bye. Oh. Oops. Still plugging. <laughs> So yeah, turn that off. Just you gotta open it here. Open it there. There. Oh, nice. And then just turn it off. Cool. No, you, I think you muted it. You gotta keep your finger on it. <laughs>